According to a recent study, 7 in 10 Americans live paycheck to paycheck. So if that is you, you're not alone. But it's also probably not a place where you want to remain. Here are the 10 steps you can take to stop living paycheck to paycheck. Number one, believe it is possible. One of the greatest hurdles to overcome for any change we desire in life is the obstacle of doubt. If someone's first response to the idea of no longer living paycheck to paycheck is that's impossible because of X, then they'll never achieve it. And it doesn't even matter what X is. If you have decided already that the circumstances of your life are so stacked against you that you can never get ahead financially, then you never will. Now, the circumstances for you might be more difficult than others, but it's never impossible. Believe it is possible and that you have the power to make a change. That's number one. Number two, don't wait for more money. Just like this is impossible thinking will keep you stuck, so is I need more money to stop living paycheck to paycheck. It is true, of course, that some people need to make more money to get ahead financially. But when we fall into the trap of thinking we can never get ahead without it, we never even give ourselves the opportunity to find out. Let me try and demonstrate this. Seven in 10 Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Now, is that because 70% of us don't make enough money? Or is it because many of us are buying things we don't need and spending money where it doesn't need to be spent? This is a very important distinction because either we are all being held hostage by an unfair economic system that needs to be entirely blown up, or we need to take more personal responsibility with our excess spending. It appears, in many cases, to be the latter. Let's look deeper into that 70% number and you'll notice something important. 62% of people earning between 50 and 100,000 per year live paycheck to paycheck. And watch this, 54% of people earning between 100,000 and 150,000 per year live paycheck to paycheck. To put that into context, the median household income in the United States is $67,000. Over half of American households making twice the median income live paycheck to paycheck. There are some extenuating circumstances, of course but not for 54% of Americans in the higher income bracket. All that to say, there is no change possible if we constantly fall into the I just need more money thinking. That's not usually the correct answer to the question. Perhaps you've seen this even in your own life. The more money people make, the more money they end up spending. The time to get out of paycheck to paycheck living is now, not waiting for a big raise to come. Number three, make this the life change you want most. There are more important things in life than getting ahead financially, sure. But this is still a change worth pursuing because it brings more calm and freedom into your life and family. And so if you're ready to make it happen, finally, I recommend making this the life change you want most. Changing the way you spend will require focus and intention. It will require seriousness and energy. But decide today, once and for all, this is the victory you are going to pursue in life. And make sure your immediate family is on board with it. When trying to get buy-in from your partner or kids, explain the benefits in a way that resonates with them. Approach the conversation clear on what it's going to take to achieve it. To accomplish that well, you're going to need steps four and five. Number four, see the benefits of owning less. The most essential foundation for financial freedom is to spend less than you earn. If you cut back on your spending, you'll be able to get out of debt and start saving. We've all heard that advice before. But why is this step so hard to implement all the time? One reason I believe spending less is such a difficult step for many to take is because the solution sounds so unattractive to people. Buying less sounds a lot like taking a step backwards in life. And in a world where success is often defined in material spending, spending less sounds boring, unfashionable, and destined for ridicule. And that's what I used to think, until I actually tried it. 14 years ago, we made the intentional decision to own less and buy less. And it has turned out to be one of the best decisions we've ever made in life. As a result of paring down most of my possessions and determining to only buy things that were actually needed, 
I found my life improving in very significant ways. Now that I own less and spend less, I have more time, energy, and money available to me than ever before. Because I own fewer things that need to be cared for, I spend less time cleaning, organizing, and managing. I have more opportunity than ever before to pursue my greatest passions in life. Rather than running up a credit card bill by chasing every new product or fashion line sold at the store, I'm able to invest in the things that make my life worthwhile and significant. In this simple decision to buy and spend less, financial discontent in my life has been resolved. It's also paved the way for more intentional living. So consider the benefits and be drawn to the lifestyle. Number five, sit down and do the financial math. Overcoming the cycle of paycheck to paycheck living will require you to sit down with a sheet of paper and take a good hard look at your income and expenses. But this does not have to require a detailed track every spending every day for three months type of budget. Instead, I recommend crafting a spending plan, which I have found to be immensely useful in my own life. To get started, determine your monthly take home pay, not your gross income before taxes, but the final bottom line. Then compare your fixed monthly costs to your monthly take home pay. These fixed costs are the expenses that you currently have in your life that require some of your income every month, no questions asked. The actual monthly expense may vary within reason from month to month, but you know it's going to be there regardless. So I'm talking about things like giving to charity, your mortgage, groceries, auto fuel, maintenance, retirement, utilities, insurance, your college loan repayment, uh, internet, cell phone, homeowner fees, kids' school activities, etc. After you've determined your monthly income and your monthly fixed costs, whatever dollars remain is your monthly discretionary income, the money you have left over to spend. And this is your margin to begin getting ahead every month. If you spent no other dollars on golf outings or concerts or cinnamon rolls or travel, these are the dollars that you could begin saving and use to get ahead of your paycheck. And of course, if your monthly fixed costs already exceed your monthly income, then drastic changes to your baseline standard of living need to be made. Step number six, admit that you probably spend more on non-essentials than you think. According to one poll, the average adult in the United States spends $1,500 a month on non-essential items. I've cited that stat before and the comments are always the same. That's absurd. That's unrealistic. Obviously, that's just rich people. There's no way I spend that much money on non-essentials. And to some extent, there's probably truth to some of those replies. Since that's the average number, roughly half of us spend below that amount. But if we are ever going to stop living paycheck to paycheck, we need to admit at some point that we probably spend more money on non-essentials than we care to admit. Once we start buying things and bringing them into our lives, it becomes very easy to no longer imagine life without them. And what started as a want, we begin to think of as a need. Consider this, you may not think you spend $1,500 a month on non-essentials, but even if you spend half of that amount, you could save $10,000 next year by simply not buying things that you don't need. Number seven. Put your savings into a different account. As you begin to see the benefits of owning less and change your spending habits accordingly, you'll spend less money. So open a new account at your bank or use an online bank to store those funds. Transfer money every month, automatically or manually, it doesn't matter. Pick an appropriate dollar amount and transfer it at the beginning of every month or pay period. Only check the balance in your new account once or twice a year. Just let it grow slowly every month. Taking the money out of your usual spending account will keep you from spending it. And if you need a goal to save towards, one paycheck worth in savings would technically remove you from the paycheck to paycheck statistic. And so that's a good goal here. Other experts would recommend saving three to six months of living expenses. And there's nothing wrong with that goal, but it can seem really difficult to someone struggling to just get ahead of one paycheck. So I recommend choosing one paycheck worth in savings as your first goal to work towards. Number eight, 
embrace a no spend period. Commit to one month of buying nothing, except for the obvious exceptions, insurance and utilities and food. No buy experiments offer lots of benefits. They help us save money. They help us reset our consumeristic tendencies. They provide time for other endeavors and they're environmentally friendly. There are wonderful examples of people who commit to no buy experiments for an entire year or even longer. I've never set out for a year long experiment, nor have I ever had the desire to do so, but I do find inspiration in their example. I see it this way. If someone else can accomplish not buying anything for an entire year, then surely I could do it for one month. For most people, just one month of not buying anything would result in almost $1,000 in savings. You might be closer to overcoming paycheck to paycheck living than you think. I also want to mention here uh, something that I think is important, and that is that getting ahead financially does not require lifelong changes. Adjustments in the short term alone can help you reach the goal of putting one paycheck into savings. And that's why the predetermined no spend period can be so helpful. Number nine, don't be afraid to consider drastic changes. Cost of living numbers vary widely from one part of the country to another. And I can understand why making drastic changes might not be possible for some, but that should never keep us from considering them. Maybe you're happy living paycheck to paycheck because it allows you to live in a certain part of town or the country. Of course, if that's the case, you probably didn't click to watch this video anyway. But if you did and your mind constantly races to but you don't understand how much it costs to simply live where I live, you might be right, and you can always choose to continue that. But anytime we want something new for our lives, changes are required, sometimes small and sometimes drastic. So don't be afraid to consider all of them. Number 10, last point, be gentle with yourself and give yourself some time. Overcoming the paycheck to paycheck lifestyle is possible, but it might not happen right away. It might take some time, especially if we have families to get on board with the decision. And with any change that takes time, there are bound to be some setbacks and mistakes along the way. Work to intentionally eliminate as many of those as possible, but be patient with yourself when they occur. Two steps forward and one step back is still one step closer to your goal than never trying. Seven in 10 Americans live paycheck to paycheck, but you don't need to be one of them.